Hello, welcome back. It's Bad Crafty Facilitation. It's me and uh, Steve again. And we've been doing some facilitation lately, of course, and facilitation planning, which got us started in a conversation. So Steve, uh, what do you have to share? Well, I was working with some of my colleagues in HR, planning a session to help them think about actions through and with group work. And I thought I'd share how I do it because I always find it hard to manage time and get the time slots right. So in my notebook that you might have seen before, I've got little dots down the side. So each of these lines marks 10 minutes with the break in the middle. And this is where we, so I kind of sketch out the activities like this when I'm doing a workshop and kind of think about how subgroups work together and then kind of discuss it and iterate it around. And then this is the framework that we came up. And it means that as I'm planning my activities, I can think about the people and the time and because the grids keep me right, I kind of naturally don't mess up on the time thing. Is there a tip that you use, Svenari? I can, I um, thought I'll just uh, share my screen. I have a, a schedule for our latest workshop um, right here. And we were more people involved in planning this uh, workshop and I, I didn't really own it myself. So we shared a document where we did that. And uh, you can see the schedule uh, in this area here. And we had to be very careful to plan the timings um, for the design, for the set goals. Uh, but as we went on, we had a section here, we have invited customers to come and tell us their stories. And when they got engaged, we had no way of controlling the time for the time. So the time went quite far over the planned uh, timing, which mean that, meant that we had to start thinking about how do we actually now put together the rest of the workshop in order to, to, to gain what we needed to gain. So that's, that's interesting when th that happens. And, and what you do is you, you improvise and you have some thoughts of this uh, on beforehand, but having a plan like this was helpful as, as um, we are more people here, but uh, also uh, some of those people who had the schedule also got nervous because we went past the set time. So there's uh, pros and, and uh, cons here. And also at the end of the workshop, uh, uh, we had a session where one of the people had the responsibility to introduce a task for those who participated. And just 10 seconds before we were to do that, he was thrown off the meeting by a technical fault. But as we had this plan and we had planned it carefully, it was no problem for Cardin this time to jump in and, and take that task. So there was some planning for safety as well. Yeah, the plan kind of helps and this this speaks to the design element of the model but what's interesting is that it doesn't sit in isolation because it's the abilities that you have as a facilitator to kind of lean into that kind of like ah, what's going on here let's try and fix it a little bit and also your understanding of the methods that join it all together you might uh, remember this diagram that we talked about before when you think of the kind of the rhythm of the session and those kind of activities being the key methods and the individuals uh, intersecting with those activities as they go along. So this story uh, is yet another example for us, at least how the facilitation model brings uh, these items together, how they play together. And uh, we're going to continue to explore that in future episodes. Bye.